Hello. It's the 2nd of April and it's a Thursday and really all day today I thought it was Tuesday. Don't know where my head is at. Don't know where the days have gone, but yeah, it's, um, it's Thursday, the 2nd of April. We are still in lockdown. They've actually um, kind of, in, you know, I won't say made things more difficult, but we're now restricted to 10 kilometers. We're not allowed to travel a distance greater than 10 kilometers to get whatever we need. Um, I suppose they have to do it and uh, we're just going along as everybody else is. Um, we're all in this together, right? So anyway, um, I have a story and uh, it's actually something I'm going to read. Uh, we've had this book lying around our house. I've never read it. Uh, my husband's started to read it and he found something really quite interesting uh, set in Malaysia and uh, well I, I was so fascinated by it and I'm actually going to try and do a bit more research but if you can bear with me, I'm going to read a bit of, I'm going to read this extract to you. It's written by a doctor, Lester Grinscombe, sorry about my hair, and it's called A Brief Account of My Participation as a Witness in the Trial of Kerry Wiley. In November of 1989, Kerry Wiley, a 35-year-old computer science lecturer from Sacramento, California, was apprehended in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia for the possession of marijuana. He was accused of mailing himself a package containing marijuana from Thailand, and an informant tipped off the police who searched his apartment and found more marijuana. He was charged with the possession of over 500 grams of cannabis. Death by hanging is the prescribed penalty for possession of more than 200 grams under Provision 39B of the Dangerous Drugs Act of 1983. One particularly chilling part of this law reads, in any proceedings under this Act, the provisions of this Act shall be construed and interpreted so as to give effect to the purpose of this Act without regard for ambiguities or infirmities of language or any other defects or deficiencies therein. More than a hundred people have been hanged under this law, including eight young Hong Kong residents last summer. Bail is not allowed in such cases, and the prisoner may wait two to five years for trial. By the time Kerry came to trial, he had spent over a year in the cruelly overcrowded Pudu prison, sleeping on a blanket on a cement floor in a small cell with several other prisoners, bathing in dirty water. It is not surprising that he became seriously depressed. As a 12-year-old boy, while hiking alone in the San Jacinto Mountains one winter, Kerry had slipped and fallen 60 feet down a ledge to sharp rocks below. Newspaper headlines described his survival as a Christmas miracle, but he was left with serious dis disabilities, of which the worst was painful muscle spasms in his left shoulder and arm. Like many other people, including victims of quadriplegia, paraplegia, and multiple sclerosis, Kerry discovered that cannabis was far more useful for this kind of pain and had fewer side effects than any of the medicines doctors could prescribe. He began to use it regularly, and like anyone who needs a medicine, he wanted to be sure of an ample supply. There is no evidence that he ever abused cannabis or sold it. I first heard about Kerry's plight when I received a call last February from his mother, Dr. Helen Wiley, 
a retired psycholo psychologist from Sacramento. Dr. Helen Wiley, a retired... <laughs> Sorry about that. And now it's five minutes, so I'm going to start again in the next clip.